Thank you, Leo. Thank you, Laura. And it's a great pleasure to be here. So in terms of your work in, in Mexico, could you tell us a bit about your scientific research and, and your photography that you've done in Mexico? Yes, my PhD thesis, when I went to do my um, doctoral program, basically I decided to do it with mangroves. So the, during that time, I had the opportunity to visit almost all the mangroves in the Gulf of California. That is this uh, internal, seas, uh, internal sea that uh, Mexico has. And it's, um, it's a great place. It's one of the most um, uh, impressive uh, seas in, in the planet. Jacusto used to call it the aquarium of the world. And, and I think it's, it's, it's really that. So I uh, visited many of these uh, forests. I collected samples. I do a lot of studies, but also capture the different um, mangroves and transitions that you can see in these regions from mangroves that are in contact, direct in contact with the deserts, not only cacti, also sand dunes, all the way to these uh, mangrove uh, swamps, mangrove forests that are very related with um, tropical jungles. So you can see the gradients and you can see the, the biodiversity that is changing and how these mangrove forests uh, interact with other ecosystems. Mexico is the, is the country that occupies the fourth place in the whole world with more mangroves. And we have mangroves in the Northwest, but also in the Pacific area, in the Mexican Caribbean and in the Gulf of Mexico. And each of these regions uh, have their own, their unique um, beauty. So if you go to, once I studied the Northwest Mexico, I moved to the Mexican Pacific and I visited this big uh, mangrove forest with, that has the highest mangroves in Mexico. The, it's the same species that you can see in the Northwest Mexico, the red mangrove. In the desert areas, these species can uh, grow up to two or three meters. In, in the tropics, in the Pacific, like for example, La Encrucijada in Chiapas, the same species can reach 40 meters high. Wow. Top. So it's really a huge, a completely different uh, world. And uh, you can see in these forests, uh, um, crocodiles and ant eaters and raccoons and, many other um, species um, that really represent a, a, a incredible ecosystems. But then if you jump to the Yucatan Peninsula, you see again the new, the small uh, mangrove trees because it's, um, they don't have the, the, the same freshwater uh, inputs like in Chiapas or Oaxaca. But the, the diversity of the Caribbean, you can, you can see it very, um, you can see it in the clear waters and all the, all the different uh, fauna and flora that you can uh, explore and discover in that, in that areas. And also uh, trying to help in the conservation of these areas because each of these region, uh, regions, um, have a, a different drivers that are impacting in a very negative way uh, the mangroves uh, areas. For example, in, the, in, in Chiapas and Oaxaca in the Pacific, the uh, palm agriculture is the one that is reducing the mangrove forest. In the Northwest Mexico, the shrimp farming. In the Caribbean, the tourism industry and in the Gulf of Mexico, the oil uh, industry is the one that is um, impacting very negatively these mangrove areas. So each, uh, each region has their own flavors, not only in biodiversity, also in the drivers that are 
causing their this all these problems. <laughs>